a lot of people at the moment are concerned about how they're going to stay warm this winter. Um, we got a video on an emergency candle heater, which is literally just that, an emergency solution. In a short term the situation, um, yeah, made out of things that people might just happen to have with them anyway. And I've got a lot of flack on that video for this not being a viable way to heat a home, which of course it isn't, it's an emergency heater. Now, a lot of people are commenting that they're just not going to heat this year. Uh, you know, a lot of people, um, because it's just, you know, the uh, energy costs are so high that people just can't afford to heat the homes. But there are other solutions now, you know, that actually are viable moving forward and so on. If there's not a power cut and you're connected to the power grid, you've still got options. Um, you know, you don't need a backup emergency power cut heater. What you need is something viable that you can use day to day to stay comfortably warm all winter long. And the simplest solution for that in its simplest form is to heat the person and not the room or even the house. Um, micro heaters are incredibly efficient and really effective. Uh, the simplest solution to that that we're all familiar with are hot water bottles. And these are what I recommend for use in power cuts. Um, <laughs> it's the most efficient form of heat going. You can take just a couple of litres of hot water, you can turn that into a huge amount of comfort because it's, you know, on your body, it's comfortable and so on. But if you're uh, sitting for an evening or whatever, you don't be going out and boiling the water all the time. And, you know, it, that's inconvenient. The simplest solution for keeping yourself warm is one of these. Now, this is a vivarium heater, as a heater for reptile tanks. This gets up really warm. I use these for all kinds of things. I use them for plant starts in the spring for bottom heat. I use them for making, uh, for fermenting various brews and so on, for keeping them at a temperature because it's not a really warm house. Uh, and we're, you know, living very, very far north. This thing gets incredibly warm. The way that you use this to keep warm is to put it um, under your feet as you're sitting. <laughs> if your hands and feet are warm, and you're wrapped up reasonably comfortably, you're gonna to be toasty warm. And this thing uses seven watts. I mean, if I had this under my feet for more than five minutes, even with no other heat source in the house, within a few minutes, I'm turning it down. You know, it gets too warm. My heat are too warm, my feet are too warm, and I'm actually starting to sweat. If you're sitting at a table, because you're typing or whatever, you can have a second one in front of your keyboard. So as you're typing, and using your mouse, so as you're typing, your wrists, are over the hot section and that'll keep you incredibly warm. You're not going to feel cold. And with two of these on the go, you're still only talking 14 watts. There's various shapes, there's various types. A lot of them have got, um, uh, you know, the design specifics. So you get some that are designed for putting in front of your keyboard to keep that warm. Uh, but it's shaped, you know, it's good for the, just that one thing. And they're quite expensive. I think, you know, these, I think, are like 12, 13 pounds. They're really not expensive. And you can pop it into anything. You know, you've got a bad back wrap it in a towel, turn it down below, put that into the small of your back. <laughs> That's a lot of comfort. If you've got cold feet, you can put it under your feet. If you're working at your desk, you can sit, you know, you can keep it in front of your desk. And I mean, for the equivalent of a single old school 60 watt incandescent light bulb, you can run eight of these. That's enough to keep a family of four sweating and it costs less than this to run. Conductive heat, actually touching the heated object is by far the most efficient way to heat anything at all. Um, most of our house heating runs on uh, convective heat, which is heat the, heat the air, heat the room, and then that air gives up its heat to everything around it and brings it to a temperature. But it is a very poor conductor. It's an insulator. These heating systems originate from an era when there was, I mean, loads of free fossil fuel energy. You know, it was so cheap, it wasn't really much of an issue. By actually being in contact with it, this is much more efficient than any heating system you can come across. Come across. It's easy to think, I must heat the house. No. To be comfortable, you need to heat yourself. Heat the person, not the room. There are limitations to them. Um, any house needs ventilation. If you're not running a heating system with, you know, typically a source of dry heat to drive the damp away, a lot of houses, especially older houses, can suffer from damp. If you ventilate regularly and you know there's no problem, you can just open a door and a window several times a day or just keep a window cracked open for ventilation. It doesn't matter. As long as you're getting air exchanged through, you shouldn't have too much of a problem with damp. And really, if your situation is that you can't afford to run heating and you're concerned about being cold, then you know really you're going to have the problem with the damp anyway. You might as well be warm while you're doing it. Um, the other issue, potentially, if the, uh, if the house drops too far below the temperature, is you can have the issue with frozen pipes. And, you know, that's a huge amount of damage with fractured pipes and so on. But the same thing applies. You'd have that problem even without these heaters. If you just don't heat, it drops below zero. That's a problem. 
Uh, and of course, for a lot of people, it could just be a case of, you know, one person's working at home during the day, sitting at a desk, well, a couple of these on the go in the room is a lot easier than running the heating and perhaps run the heating in the evening when the whole family's home or, um, you know, whatever. You know, you've got a bedroom that's particularly cold. You can just run a couple of those heaters for an individual. The same with anything electrical. Don't run it wrapped in a blanket and just go away. I mean, these are designed to be run um, inside like a, a tank with, you know, sand on top of and so on. They're supposedly waterproof. Wouldn't want to submerge it, but I mean, it's not, a huge energy draw but it does get really quite hot so don't leave anything electrical switched on especially when it's a heat source even if it is just 7 watt because if you insulate this inside a blanket or something the temperature inside that is going to build up a lot hotter than just the 23 24 degrees that these are going to get to and you could damage it um, and of course start a fire so there are other systems that work very similarly um, a lot of um, methods used to be you know put a brick on your fireplace and bring that up to temperature then rack that on a blanket and take that bite that to bed all exactly the same thing but that requires a lot of planning as so well not everyone's got um you know a fire or anything that, you know, or an oven or whatever they can heat a brick up in and really something like this is really simple i mean i've run these for i think three years currently um, underneath, you know, plants start in the spring and so on, and, uh, you know, brewing various uh, concoctions for, you know, um, soil biology. But, uh, yeah, they've never failed me. I've never had one burn out yet. I think I've got three of them in total. And I've probably got four years, I think, are the oldest one. And it's still going strong. They keep going. They're really reliable uh, and they're cheap and an incredible amount of comfort. The next logical, the, the end goal, the, the ultimate version of the conductive heat is one of these. This is a rocket mass heater. Um, this is by far, in my opinion, the most effective heater that the human race has ever created. They are amazing. And I would not be without one. I would not swap this for any kind of heating, no matter what you pay me. This is better than absolutely anything. But it's not for everyone. There's a certain amount of work involved in them. Uh, they're a fairly complex build if you're, you know, you're not used to building. Uh, but I just thought I'd explain it as soon as I'm sitting on it. This is effectively uh, burns a very small amount of wood, incredibly hot, and runs that. Uh, the hot gas is then through a pipe that runs through this bench I'm sitting on, which is about you know, 8 to 10 tonne of thermal mass of stone and clay, um, and then it leaves the premises. So effectively, we've got somewhere in the region of a 10 tonne light storage heater or hot water bottle. Um, so we don't really use these things for heating anymore because you know we've upgraded a little but don't underestimate one of these this is probably the most efficient heater that you can buy both in terms of energy consumption and in terms of actual money outlay because they're you know fairly inexpensive and yeah you buy a couple at a time and you can you know afford to keep the entire family warm this winter without spending a great deal of money